I'm a journalist, and I'm going to explain why I think the Hong Kong protests, the Australian bushfires, the coronavirus, and the H5N1 bird flu are all related incidences, and that there is one country responsible for creating and fueling all of them, and that country is America. The Third World War is happening right now, except it's way more sophisticated than anything we've ever seen. It doesn't involve weapons or drugs or sex or religious fanatics. It's the war of natural disasters. It plays into the most human natural reaction, which is fear, fear of the unknown. Now, all of these incidences are happening one after the other. It's like a media circus out there. So, my theory as a journalist is you're being played by the world media and the ringmasters, the storytellers of the circus, are the USA and the UK. They are orchestrating the next world war before our very eyes. The target of this is China, North Korea and Iraq. They don't care if the rest of the world suffers too. But when you look at the three countries most affected by coronavirus right now, the top three are China, followed by South Korea, and then Iraq. The USA hates China. The virus is probably in South Korea because it's a way for the virus to enter into North Korea, which is an ally of China and a threat to the USA as well. Then we've got Iraq. No explanation needed there. Again, an enemy of the USA state. So we are beginning to see a pattern emerge in how the countries that were relatively historically at war or in disagreement with the USA are mostly are the ones that are mostly affected by the coronavirus. I wouldn't be surprised if the number of people that the USA claims is affected by the coronavirus in the USA, I wouldn't be surprised if the actual number of people is a lot less than the reported number. Because why would Americans affect themselves with a virus that they created? So when you look at statistics for the coronavirus coming out of the United States, I would take it with a pinch of salt. If you look at Trump's recent actions, he decided to take a very convenient trip to India, surrounding himself with the adoring Indian public, who were clearly paid to show up and make a big deal of his arrival into the country for the benefit of the press. This was all done as the virus became pandemic, spreading into Europe. Now, if any one of you have needed thousands of Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook followers overnight, you would also pay Indians to like or follow you, wouldn't you? So by going on this trip, Trump and the media distracted our attention away from the real problem, which is the virus. Trump was probably advised by his press team to pack his bags, leave the USA to avoid constant attacks and criticisms about his general lack of empathy, lack of interest, and lack of expertise in talking about the virus making the public aware of it, and in helping us find the cure for it. So he decided to take a trip to act out a public service to his country because he knows that the coronavirus is not really going to affect the USA. What is the real purpose of his trip to India anyways if it's not a media ploy or distraction? The important thing is he has taken a trip to a country that is relatively free of the virus right now. Do we see anyone in India being affected by the coronavirus? I would not be surprised if the next virus attack happens there in India, like China, because India is one of the most populous countries in the world, and it's where a virus would be having a field day, spreading around, claiming many more victims in its wake. I mean, bring the virus to India. Maybe the super cure there is curry powder for it. I mean, I definitely consume a lot of it myself and it does have antiseptic properties. If he plays his cards right though, Trump will time the release of the virus in India with his departure of the country. Let's wait and see what happens. My theory is that Trump brought the virus to India. Incidentally, someone told me last night over an Indian curry dinner, that an Israeli person has found a cure for the virus, but can't release this cure or administer it until it's been a, through a process of rigorous testing on animals, on vegetables, on babies. 
whatever else they need to test it on. But isn't it ironic in a way that Israel and the USA actually share strong historical ties? I mean, you only have to look at the number of Academy Award winners in Best Picture or Best Actor, Actress categories who are Jewish to see where the loyalties lie between Israel and the USA. So the fact that Israel has a cure for this virus also leads me to think that the USA really did invent the virus and is now allowing Israel to credit itself as the saviors of saving the world against the coronavirus, kind of like what Jesus, another Jew, did for most of us when he saves us from our sins. I really believe that a bunch of English language teachers, students, or journalists, God forbid that I'm speaking out against my own kind, but these people who were American or British planted the coronavirus in landlocked Wuhan because they knew it was going to spread through the whole of China evenly. Parents, beware your child's English language teacher especially if they're living in landlocked Wuhan, because there are way more dynamic and exciting cities in China to live in. I mean, Wuhan isn't exactly on Lonely Planet's most charming cities of the world list. I personally don't know why any foreigner would want to be there because I'm part Chinese and I don't even want to be there. I mean, I live in Spain right now. I'm also part Spanish Basque, if you want to be exact. And El País, the newspaper here, reported that they needed to truck a busload of Spanish people out of Wuhan to get them back to Spain. And I was thinking, what the fuck are Spanish people doing in Wuhan? Is there a Zara factory out there? So the world is in the middle of this sophisticated third world war. You just don't see it because it's a virus. But if you look beyond the natural disaster metaphors that the media is selling us, you have to say, really, really? Are these all just natural disasters and natural diseases? I highly doubt the coronavirus came from eating bats. I mean, I'm Hong Kong Chinese. I'm also Scottish and Persian and Basque, and none of my nationalities eat these critters. But people in mainland China have been eating bats for years, so this is not the source of the virus. That theory was planted by the Americans because the Americans planted the virus in China. Let's talk about the Australian bushfires. I think the Americans also started the Aussie bushfires to burn everything that China buys from Australia. Growing up when I was younger in Hong Kong, we used to import a lot of American meat and dairy products. But over the years, we've started consuming a lot more and importing a lot more from Australia and New Zealand because we just think it's of a better quality and it's not pumped full of hormones. I mean, we do want our organic produce. So the Americans are jealous. They have this loss of income. So they chose strategic points all around the co coastline of Australia to make sure the fires spread into the country. This was systematically organized. Then in a stroke of media brilliance, the USA firefighters rushed to Australia to help put those fires out. Nobody like realize that the eucalyptus trees could burn so fast. That was the issue. <laughs> you know, the Americans, they were, again, the devils and the angels, the media angels of this story. They knew exactly what they were doing by creating a situation that would make them look good, a natural disaster that was not on home soil. How American. Let's profit off the suffering of another country. How Trump. Let's do it in Australia. What a great media hype. Only Americans could orchestrate such media brilliance and show their dashing firemen to be the saviors of the bushfires. Because don't forget, there's also strong alliances between Australia and America as well. Think of all the Academy Award winners who are Australian, who win Best Actor, um, Best Actress, many Australians working in LA and Hollywood. The virus was put in the middle of China because Wuhan is landlocked 
and the majority of Chinese people live in the center of the country, not on the coastline. So the virus needed to spread outwards from the nucleus of the country. And the Americans systematically did that, just like they calculated that starting the bushfires would be much more effective around the coastline of Australia, because that's where the majority of Australians live. <coughs> Finally, <coughs> am I catching a virus? I hope not. Something, a subject near and dear to my heart, the Hong Kong protests. <clears throat> the popular theory in Hong Kong and China now, after the traditionally peaceful protests of Hong Kongers turned violent and destructive, is that the Americans and English are actually responsible for starting and encouraging these protests in Hong Kong. The destruction tactics employed by the protesters were similar to those taught and used in the CIA training camp in Norway. Left to their own devices, I can personally attest that Hong Kong people are not violent. So someone, a foreigner maybe, or a group of foreigners, caused Hong Kong people to start getting destructive of public property, something no one in their right mind should support. I was wholly in support of the protests myself until I returned to Hong Kong and I saw the damage that they did to public property and the disruption to people's daily lives. This was in November of 2019 when I was there and I no longer supported it after I saw this because to me destroying anything is an act of wanton passion without logic. It is much more conducive and intelligent to negotiate. The art of negotiation, that's what sets us humans apart from animals. The Hong Kong protest, in my theory, is the USA and Britain's way of attacking China because protests don't work in communist China. You don't even have the right to protest in China. Here in socialist Spain, it's a joke. A protest is like a way to gather and have a party or a fiesta. But my point is that most foreigners can't get into China for extended periods of time unless they're, number one, an expert in their field, number two, a student, number three, an English language teacher, and number four, maybe a writer or a journalist. In any case, you could say that the USA and the UK are just jealous and want to bring China down because China is one of the few countries in the world that doesn't actually have any debt. Many countries own money to China, but China doesn't owe money to anyone. Then you got to ask yourself, why are there protests? Is there really a lack of freedom? I mean, when you look at the index for freedom in other countries, the only freedom Hong Kong really lacks is press freedom. Therefore, what freedom is Hong Kong really fighting for? I'm part Spanish, or Basque if you want to be exact, and I ask my Basque and Catalonian friends, who are also separatists, exactly the same question. What are you fighting for? Because when you compare the situation in Hong Kong or Spain to the rest of the world's freedom index, you will realize that you are very free. Sometimes people's passions get in way over their heads. Why do all these people globally who fight for separatism and want their own independent country and state think that they can survive as their own country? It's kind of egotistical and illogical to me. I mean, be careful what you wish for. Wanting separatism is very different from running your own country. There's a lot of costs that go into having your own country. You've got to draw a border. You have to create a currency. You have to decide which is the official language. You have to decide who are your allies. You have to build an education system, a religious system maybe. In the eyes of the rest of the world, all this wanton energies to create your own country it might eventually make you vulnerable and weak and poor. So be careful what you wish for. So the Americans and the UK citizens living in Hong Kong who work as English language teachers, journalists, students, writers, then decided to use this recent case of extradition of a Hong Kong man who murdered his Hong Kong girlfriend in China 
they decided to use this as the impetus to start their own pro-USA retaliations against China by encouraging the Hong Kong public to make noise about the lack of freedom in Hong Kong. Basically, China asked Hong Kong to send this murderer, this Hong Kong murderer, back to China for trial. And Hong Kong people said, no, we're not sending him back because, number one, we don't have an extradition agreement with China, so we don't have to send him back to you. And number two, if we did, he would get executed. For goodness sake, the man murdered his girlfriend. I personally think everyone who kills someone intentionally and not in self-defense should be killed themselves. He should be sent back to China for trial and to get what he deserves, which would probably be execution. But have Hong Kong people lost their heads if they're not allowing a murderer to be executed himself? I personally think so, but in any case, it was probably the worst example of what Hong Kong could use as an example to the world, that it was not ready to succumb to China's laws. But maybe again, it was the best example of a story that would attract the right media attention. I mean, I was personally in two minds about it. On the one hand, I didn't see how a murderer should walk away from having killed someone. But on the other hand, I can kind of understand that Hong Kong would not want to send him back because that would mean that anybody in the future who was a Hong Kong person and created a crime in China would then be sent back to China to stand judgment and would probably end up not living, would probably end up being killed. Now, though, I realize that the Hong Kong protests were, in actual fact, the Hong Kong press protests. Quote unquote, for the USA and UK overseas press bureaus who are stationed in Hong Kong. So really the Hong Kong protests were a way for the foreign journalists that lived in Hong Kong to illustrate how horrible China's regime was to the rest of the world. But did Hong Kong people actually instigate the protests themselves or were they paid by the foreigners to start the protests? That answer still remains to be, that question still remains to be answered. Finally, the H5N1 bird flu in Hubei, the virus, a new problem that has led to the slaughtering of 18,000 live chickens in the province's farms. Such industrial waste, America. I mean, you already created enough waste, industrial waste, shipping it over to China to recycle. And now you kill 18,000 of China's chickens? Really? I mean, when you shipped your waste over, China to, over to China to recycle, China finally rejected your waste, along with most of Europe's and Spain's, and said, we are done with recycling your shit. Take your shit back. So the USA is angry at China. I mean, think about it. Would you like to be told to take your shit back? I wouldn't. What is the solution then? What is the solution to all of this right now? As we are waiting for a cure to the coronavirus, Hurry up, Israel. If you have the cure, don't play around with it, testing it on animals. Just test it on humans and, you know, pray for the best. But the solution right now for me is how I feel. Number one, despite the loss of 18,000 chickens, China should not buy any more produce from America. Number two, China should kick all Americans and British out of their country. Unless that expat happens to be married to a Chinese person and has children with them, then there's like an emotional attachment there to the country, in which case they're probably, you know, not dangerous. Number three, China needs to start looking closely at who it lets into its country and who it trusts. And number four, perhaps China should then take the more stringent, prudent, cautious, and racist approach of its Asian brothers, the Japanese, who make it notoriously difficult for foreigners to live and work in Japan. 
So yeah, the Japanese are like the most ra racist Asians out there, and maybe China should start being a little bit more racist themselves. I mean, it's about time since everybody is racist against China, right? I mean, here in Spain, I have friends, they don't even want to eat at a Chinese restaurant because they think they're going to get the virus. It's that bad. <laughs> so China, you got to be more racist. And that's the coffee.